Greetings. Hi, thanks for joining me today. We're going to learn all about jackrabbits and how to sketch them. So let's get started. So in case you don't know me, hi, I'm Christine Elder. I'm an environmental educator, naturalist, and visual artist from Central Oregon. Um, and I love teaching in person and online like I'm doing today. So thanks for joining me. So today um, we've got some suggested materials if you want to follow along with the step-by-step -step demonstration. But if you don't have those materials, don't worry. You can always come back and uh, watch this again later on. So we do have some downloadable handouts. There's three pages of uh, pictures of the black-tailed jackrabbit for you to practice sketching. And we're going to be sketching several of these. Uh, and if you want to follow along, you can have any kind of medium you want. But I'm going to be demonstrating with uh, a brown Prismacolor very thin pencil um, like I might use in the field. And then our second demonstration is going to be using uh, these water soluble pencils and my water brush. And again, those are also something I love using in the field. So let's start talking about this group. So as you may know, I love teaching you about uh, the taxonomy and behavior and anatomy so that once we do start sketching, it will be easier. You'll have um, ability to sketch uh, faster and with more confidence. So today we're talking about the order of mammals called the lagomorphs. And they have this unique set of incisors called peg teeth. And I'll show you a picture of their skull in a moment. They lack paw pads. They basically, the bottom is covered entirely with fur. Um, the females are larger, which is kind of a rare trait among mammals. Uh, their rear legs are modified for jumping. All species are terrestrial. All are strict herbivores. And they have a very short, furry tail. I'm already getting too hot with the lights in the camera. <laughs> uh -huh. So they do have a lot of uh, similarities to rodents. In fact, they used to be placed in that group. So they are gnawing herbivores, um, although many rodents are omnivorous, like my pet rats. Um, they have large, continuously growing incisors and no canines. And there's a big gap between their cheek teeth and the incisors. Uh, and they can close their lips behind that gap and gnaw on their food. So, um, so here we have the lagomorph represented by a rabbit. And here we have in the order rodentia uh, represented by a little gray squirrel. So here's an image here. We can see that um, here's a squirrel or rodent uh, skull, and here's a lagomorph or a rabbit skull. So if you're ever out in the field um, on a hike or in a meadow and you find a skull, um, you can easily tell the difference between rodents and our uh, rabbits and jackrabbits. Uh, because they have this little tiny pair of teeth behind. Now, you can't see it very well with this black background, but you, there's a second um, tiny set of incisors called peg teeth behind there. And here again is another uh, picture, and you can see those just a little bit behind there. So that's something unique that's really obvious in skulls. Okay, and so there are two families in the lagomorph order, uh, the pikas and the rabbits. And I have already done a workshop on pikas. You may have joined me for that. And that workshop is to be found inside of my um, Sketching Mammals of the World course that I can tell you about later. Uh, but there are about 23 species of pikas. So they kind of look like a rabbit a little bit with um, shorter ears, don't they? And they don't have um, back legs for jumping. But we are focusing on the um, rabbit and jackrabbit and bunny family today, the family um, Leporidae. And the way to remember that, I think, is um, the LEP kind of reminds me of leaping, like how a rabbit can um, leap. Um, and the ending DAE, that always um, is the ending you find in family names. And there are about 60 species. And so here's kind of a... Uh, a diagram of them. Today, we're going to be sketching the hairs in the Lepus genus, but there's also a bunch of other uh, rabbits in other various um, genera. 
um, probably the most familiar to you as like um, bunny rabbits that you might have as a pet um, in this genus, the cottontails. So um, rabbits is a common name for all species except the lepus genus we're sketching today. Um, specifically, cottontails belong to the genus Silviligus with almost 30 species. And then jackrabbits and hares belong to the genus Lepus, about 33 species. And hare um, is just another name. It's not like they're um, unrelated. They're all in, they're two uh, common names within the uh, Lepus genus. So um, hares and jackrabbits versus basic rabbit, bunny rabbit, like the Easter bunny. So hares and jackrabbits, like we're sketching today, they live above ground and they make simple nests above ground, as opposed to bunnies will dig underground. Um, they're born precocial. That means they're able to um, see and run very soon after birth. Also, hares and jackrabbits are larger with longer ears and often black markings at the end. They're solitary, so they're not living in groups. They've never been domesticated as opposed to uh, bunny rabbits that you might have at home as a pet or you might show <laughs> um, in a bunny show. Um, they're faster, much longer distance runners, up to 50 miles an hour, and they can leap 10 feet. And they have this uniquely jointed or kinetic skull, a unique among all mammals, which helps protect the brain and absorb shock when leaping. So there are 30 spe species in this genus, and there's a bunch of um, names for them down here. So uh, hares, that um, term generally more refers to uh, ones in Europe, although it does include our Arctic hare, but scrub, cape of Africa, mountain, European, bunch of them. And then jackrabbits are uh, pretty much um, only in North and Central America. That's the antelope, the black, black-tailed, white-sided, white-tailed, and then two species that are down in Central America, uh, which I can't really pronounce. <laughs> So jackrabbits have larger ears than your Easter bunny. Um, they help cool uh, the hares or jackrabbits and also help them listen for danger. And you see they're um, tinged with black at the end, as is their tail. So like I said, they're really long distance and very swift runners. And you can see that they have very long, flexible spines. And here is the uh, skeleton. I do like to have you guys look at skeletons so you really understand um, the, the shape and the, where the joints are. Because especially in a lot of mammals that are really furry, it's kind of hard to tell where the angles are um, compared to something like a lizard. And you can see uh, many of them are very well camouflaged. Oh, well, that uh, makes sense. Uh, just about all of this order is pretty well camouflaged because um, they have many predators. <laughs> so, for example, <laughs> hawks and eagles and dogs and cats and mustelids and ground squirrels uh, and even coyotes like we see here. Um, but in terms of what they eat, they're kind of opportunistic herbivores, again, strictly herbivores as opposed to their relatives, the rodents, uh, many of which uh, do uh, eat um, some uh, meat. So they'll eat grass and clover, uh, composite flowers, uh, seed heads, um, roots, buds, bark, uh, dandelions like we see here. So lots of different things. And they re-ingest um, the soft green fecal pellets to get more nutrition since their, um, their diet is very high in fiber. So um, once they, they poop, they'll eat that one more time um, to help digest further uh, their food. And they have large litters <laughs> to ensure their survival since they do have so many predators. And here's another uh, side view here of our black-tailed jackrabbit and um, side by side looking at the body. So again, like I said, even though they're furry, 
If you understand um, the body, you can uh, understand where the angles are. So like if you look at the skeleton here, you can see the shoulder blade just like we have. Um, and it's really subtle right here uh, in the hair. Um, and then the uh, elbow is tucked up under here, back here. Um, and then the uh, knee, uh, you might not notice the knee if you weren't familiar with the uh, skeleton, but the knee is kind of hidden right back here. And you see they've got really long feet. So here's the ankle right here. And again, they're really flexible, those, um, those feet, as well as the um, ankles, I mean the knees, and then the whole um, spine so they can run um, and leap far. So you can see this whole uh, foot here on the ground. <laughs> and then they can even stand up a bit like these European hares, which are boxing or fighting each other. So um, just a few uh, more examples of the various hares and jackrabbits we have here in North America. Snowshoe hares, which range from Alaska to Northern North America. Arctic hares, which are in Northeast Canada and up into Greenland. And you can see they have these summer and winter coats. A lot of the um, various lagomorphs uh, have that so they can blend in better to their environment as it changes during the seasons, especially the species that do live where it's snowy. So they can camouflage themselves from things like, um, well, snowy owls. And this is the antelope uh, jackrabbit, named because antelope can uh, jump high. And you may have uh, taken my uh, workshop on um, antelope, like the pronghorns. This one lives in Arizona and Mexico. But today, the one we're drawing is the black-tailed jackrabbit, also known as the American desert hare, Lepus californicus. So um, I probably called Californicus because perhaps it was first described or noticed in California. Um, here you see where it lives all over the Western United States and down into um, Northern uh, Mexico and Baja. Their fossils date over 2 million years old. And they occupy many habitats. So kind of like grasslands, shrublands, open forests, uh, oak woodlands, even saguaro. And here you can see they're very camouflaged here among the, um, the shrubbery. They like to live where there's lots of shrubs so they can hide from all of those predators they have. And uh, here's a historic illustration I just thought I'd show you. John James Audubon, even though he did uh, draw a lot of uh, birds, he drew other things too. And uh, back then here, they called it the California hare. Okay, are we ready to start drawing? So tell me in the chat box uh, what your favorite rabbit or jackrabbit or hare is where you live or if you've ever seen them in the wild. So we're going to start um, talking about drawing and then we're going to draw two different um, jackrabbits in two different positions. So first we want to think about how we're going to block in their basic uh, shapes, um, the circles and squares and triangles and rectangles. And as we're doing that, thinking about their relative proportions. So for example, the jackrabbits um, have much larger ears relative to the size of their body than uh, bunny rabbits do. And then noticing angles. Um, so like we have uh, like a 90 degree angle here on their, uh, their chest and a 90 degree angle between the tail and the rump. Uh, we also might notice alignments or what structures are aligned to each other. Uh, for example, uh, well, the ears here, they're parallel to each other. And then noticing negative shapes. And uh, since this uh, jackrabbit is running in the snow, it's easy to see the snow shapes uh, behind it. So when we draw this jackrabbit, really notice this tall oval that separates the left and the right rear legs. And then also flow lines. And that's just the idea of how your pencil might flow over the forehead and the ears and the neck and the big arched rump. 
Great. I see in the chat box, folks have been seeing various uh, species. Megan likes the marsh rabbit. A uh, Ginny has seen a little um, brown bunny living in the blackberry vines. And Evelyn has seen many jackrabbits in the high desert by wild horse herds in southern Idaho. Yes, that's right. You're not too far from me, just uh, east of me where I live in central Oregon. Thanks for sharing those. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can share your comments uh, in the comments down below and also download your high resolution images we're going to be using in this um, sketching session uh, coming up next. And Meg has seen some cottontails in Virginia. Okay, and so here is the other the um, uh, rabbit we're going to draw. So see, they're very um, similar uh, in their, they, they've got their, they've got their legs all kind of coupled up um, under them. And here it's a little bit different, um, but pretty much the same uh, side view here, but very slightly different in terms of where those legs are. Noticing also how big their eyes are. A lot of um, herbivores or smaller prey species have got to have big eyes and big ears so they can sense all those predators uh, in their habitat and try to get away. Okay, so let's start sketching. Um, just a moment. Wait a minute. Oh, there we go. Oh, phew. Just a minute. It just takes a second to click on all of these things. Okay. So this is the one we're going to sketch first. And again, these are available, um, at the links, uh, down below. Okay, so we're going to sketch this one. You can use any medium you want. We're basically just focusing on the uh, exterior uh, proportions and relative proportions. Again, noticing the angles and alignments uh, and negative shapes. I'm using this um, pencil here. It's a, it's a very thin um, Prismacolor pencil. I like these for the field because they stay really sharp. You notice I don't have any eraser. <laughs> of course, you can have an eraser if you want to, but I really like practicing uh, using media that don't have any eraser because often when you're out in the field um, and you're trying to sketch live things in the field, you don't have all day to uh, be uh, perfecting your lines. So you really have to learn to start very light and loose and um, uh, practice with your pencil, um, just how light you can go and just how dark you can go using all the values. And then we're just gonna do a little bit of uh, shading uh, with that same pencil. All right, here we go. So we're looking at our black-tailed jackrabbit for just a moment. The longer you look at something and really understand its anatomy, um, the more accurate you're gonna be able to draw it. Again, I'm just kind of noticing all of these proportions and things before I get started. Okay, so I'm just noticing where the animal is on the paper, trying to draw it the same size, starting with the ears, so a big oval for the ears, and you can see how light I'm drawing, and then a kind of a triangle for the head, an oval for the chest area, big oval for the body and the arched back. And the tail, a little oval for the tail. We're going to get darker as we go, don't worry. So just blocking in very lightly where all these legs are and just trying to show those angles we discussed earlier the elbows and the knees and the wrists. And always looking back and forth between your reference photo and your sketch. 
Now we're going to go darker and I'm first going to double check my proportions. I know you probably can't see what I've drawn, but I just want you to follow along with the idea. I'm going to start going darker now that I have a very light sketch. And you can see even with these colored pencils, you can um, go very lightly. So you don't need an eraser. So now you see we're going a little bit darker and a little bit more confidently. And I've got a more of a close-up picture here so you can really see those long black tipped ears and noticing those negative shapes and those angles and alignments as you go. Always returning back to looking at your reference photo so you're drawing from observation and not from imagination or memory. Noticing that angle at the eye comes down to the little muzzle. We don't see just blocking in that very large eye that we'll put more detail into later. So this is just our second go around. We're just blocking in the major parts a bit better. Now we're going to get that big arch and notice how long it is and notice that angle between the neck and the back. So those negative shapes and angles can help you draw something just as much as actually looking at the, at the subject you're drawing. And I'm noticing how tall that back is because it's really arched. And then there's that leg with the knee coming forward. So remember, since we looked at the skeleton, we understand where the knees are, where the ankles are. Little tail. And then down to the, the foot, very long foot. And again, noticing those negative shapes and angles. And that foot is really covered with a lot of fur, so we're not going to put too much detail between the toes, we see sort of three toes with some angles there, but not going to put too much detail in there. And again, don't be afraid to um, change your lines if you need to. And just draw right over and make a new line a little bit firmer. So now we're going to get that chest, big strong chest there you see, coming down from the chin. There's not really much of a neck in this angle. So big, big right triangle, 90 degree angle with that chest coming towards the uh, front legs. And the front legs are really far back because this animal is all coupled up with all four legs right in the middle of the uh, gate, that running gate. Now we get that other front leg and we're noticing where the elbow is. Remember from the skeleton, that's an elbow. And we're noticing just how close it is to the knee. And we're going to add some lines for fur later, but we're kind of pretending that its fur is sort of wet right now and we don't want to deal with the fur yet. We just want to get the basic proportions of the, the body, the muscles. And we'll add fur lines in later. And that's another reason we stay really light and loose because we don't want too strong of a line. Double checking how close. And now I'm adding a little bit of a furry belly there. Double checking everything. 
We really can't see that front left foot very well because it's hidden between the front right foot <laughs> and the rear legs. So now I'm getting that rear left leg and again, looking very closely at that snowy negative shape, that oval. And you can see a little bit of the angle of the ankle right there. So don't forget about that. And then that left rear foot is coming forward and we see a big foot coming in front. Oh, I forgot to add that. I'm adding that later, I think. <laughs> I think I remembered later to add it. Okay, now we're going back and really firming up the head. So looking a little bit more closely now at the angles. And you see the ear has this overlapping part. And we see into this, um, the jackrabbit's right ear, whereas the left ear, we're seeing the back of it. So I'm giving some little fuzziness there to that inside right ear. And then the back of the left ear and the color pattern a little bit. I'm adding that black tip. Now the forehead, we see a very strong angle where the uh, eye meets the muzzle. Then another strong angle of the um, muzzle where the nose is, get the nose in there. And the cheek coming up around to the back of the neck. Then again, that big eye, notice how big it is, where it is. And then a very big black pupil. Okay, close enough for that. <laughs> I think there's something wrong with my mouth, <laughs> my my rabbit's mouth. I think I fixed it later, but it looks pretty funny now. Anyway, getting the chest with some um, fur. And firming up the legs. And in a moment, I'm going to add that left rear foot <laughs> putting the front left foot into shadow a bit now you see i wasn't quite right with my negative shapes there Exactly. Oh, there we go. That's a little better. Okay. So putting that foot in shadow. Again, emphasizing those angles. Don't over round things. Remember where the angles of the joints were. And sometimes it helps when you're drawing to say the parts out loud and describe them to yourself. Sometimes that helps you draw more accurately. Like, you know, this part is very fuzzy and furry, and this part is a smooth line, big arched back, short neck. And you see, I have a very subtle line there between the rump and the back. So we really see that the back of the back legs and those muscles. So now I'm using the side of my pencil just to give a little bit of uh, color there. And you can spend as much time as you want on this later on. 
because there's very pretty and subtle uh, colors and textures, those colors of the of the grasslands and shrublands, some various warm and cool browns and blacks and grays and a little bit of creamy white color. So this would be fun to spend a lot more time on if you have the time later on, but we're just getting you started here. Noticing that muscle, that tendon area that I just added on that left or the right rear leg and the black pigment on the top of the tail. And the muscles of the shoulder, the front of the shoulder. The black tipped ears. I still haven't remembered to put that back leg in. I will, I promise. Oh yeah, I added some um, whiskers. Now I've got the special, oh yes, that's right. Now I remember the right or the left rear leg foot. <laughs> and you can notice those angles and negative shapes very well. Now I'm just using this uh, special eraser this Tombow Mono Sand Imbued Eraser, which um, works better than a normal graphite pencil eraser for erasing colored pencil. I really like it. That's it, the Tombow Mono Sand Imbued Eraser. So just now continuing to work wherever you need to. And I'm fixing my, my little lower lip there. There's something wrong with that. So I could uh, fix the lip. But you see how I really separated the creation phase from the editing phase. So I got all my lines down first lightly and then Towards the end, I'm doing a little bit of erasing. And just a little bit of texture of the snow in the back. So here's the one I worked on a little bit more. So how are you guys doing? Tell me in the chat box. Again, here we are mainly focusing on getting our basic proportions and practicing with the uh, very thin pencil and trying to separate the creation from the editing phase. So uh, now my next and last one is, we'll get started here, just a second here. Here we go. So you might want to put that... Um, other sketch aside for now, and you can work on that later. You can always add some more. And remember, uh, you do have the downloadable resources if you haven't done that already. Three pages of uh, these black tailed jackrabbits in different positions for you to do more sketching from. Okay, let's start with this one. So, here, Again, you can use any medium that you're comfortable with or that you have in front of you. And if you don't um, have anything with you, you can always watch uh, this again later on when you do. But in this case, I'm demonstrating using water-soluble colored pencils. So these are the uh, Derwent Inktense brand, but there's lots of brands of water-soluble pencils. And they're fun because you can use them even either dry or wet. Um, or a combination of both. 
And uh, usually when I am wetting them, I try not to use too much water. Uh, it depends on the kind of paper I have. Um, when I'm out in the field, I try to have pretty sturdy paper so that I can do uh, light watercolor and water soluble uh, colored pencil washes. So generally you wouldn't want to um, use uh, these, these wet pencils on just copy paper. Um, like in the um, like in the handouts that I included. Uh, but um, you might want to just practice because I do have this uh, rabbit in the downloadable handouts um, with space for you to sketch down below. And of course, it's always really good practice to sketch something more than once. Um, and you can always get your sketch down. And then once you really like those proportions, you can transfer that sketch using transfer paper um, or tracing paper to a sturdier uh, piece of uh, like watercolor paper and then add your water soluble colored pencils or watercolor or whatever water based medium you want. Okay, so who's ready to try this one? This one is from page two of your handout. Okay, let's get started. So you see he's in a similar but slightly different position. Mainly his uh, legs are in a different position and we see uh, him more of, of, of a side view. Um, whereas the first one was a little bit of a three quarters view. So this guy is actually um, a lot longer because we're seeing him exactly from the side compared to our first uh, rabbit or Jack rabbit. Okay, let's get started. So uh, I'm starting with this, uh, just showing you my brush and my pencil. And I'm going ahead and just starting with that water soluble pencil again, very lightly and loosely. And trying to draw him about the same size as he is on the paper. He or she actually. <laughs> Um, can't see his private parts, <laughs> but again, the females are larger in this, uh, order, which is sort of rare, uh, for mammals. In most mammals, the males are larger. So the same idea, just very, very lightly, just pressing the very lightest you can on the paper. Just blocking in those basic ovals, rectangles, squares, triangles. And noticing we've got the um, two front legs are, are back and the two rear legs are reaching forward. So just placing those angles first. Now... Just looking at some alignments here with my ruler as an example, just for fun. You can see eat more easily the negative shapes. See this like that triangle and I'm just double checking it. And this is a very simple lightweight uh, paper ruler <laughs> that you can take in the field. That's just a way to see those negative shapes of the cloudy sky. And the arch of the back. In fact, I can probably make the arch of my back a little higher. I'm just noticing where the tail is lined up with the cheek. So just that's that concept of alignments. Now you see a close-up of the head with those big worried looking eyes and the uh the nostrils wide open, double checking my proportions before I commit myself too strongly to any certain shape. And look at how far forward those back legs are reaching. So look at that big area between the tail and the uh, 
and the legs reaching strongly forward. Remember this rabbit could be running up to 50 miles an hour, trying to outrun a Arctic fox or a coyote or a wolf even. Noticing that negative shape between the chest and the rear legs reaching forward, that snow. And you see how I just change my lines if I don't like them, just trying to get them more accurate. Here again, I see that nice negative shape of the snow behind the legs. So the front right foot is the one that's in the snow and the front left is the one lifting up. So back to firming up these lines now, going back to the head again. So this is how I always sketch because I sketch as if I'm in the field and you never know how long you're gonna be able to see an animal in the field. So that's why I work a little bit everywhere. And then as I kind of pretend that I can still see that animal, I keep adding more and more details just in case it hops away and another one doesn't show up, I've got something. I'm noticing where that big eye is and how it lines up with the front of the uh, ear. I think my pupil could be bigger. My whole eye could probably be bigger. <laughs> anyway, the shoulder there, remember that scapula, just like we have. Well, the shadow of the snow. The arc of that back, I probably could make my back a little bit longer, but you know, they're running, so could be really any angle. And there's a little angle there between the ankle and the, the bones of the foot. You can see a little bit of the toes. That knee. Now I see I've got a little bit too much space between my um, my rabbit's chest and that left rear leg coming forward, right? So I could probably have fattened him up a bit. Sometimes I don't notice these things until I'm actually showing it up on the big screen. Now I'm doing the same as I did before. Where I'm just using the side of my pencil just to get a little bit of pigment everywhere. And then we're going to wet it and then add some little details. And this is quite an iterative process, meaning you can kind of go back and forth, keep fixing things. You can even get the the uh, pencils wet and then let the paper dry and add some more details once the paper's dry. I'm 
I'm just starting to get the highlights and shadows and the edge of the fur. Now here's my little brush with the water inside it already. This is the Pentel. I think this is the Pentel Aquash water brush, but there's several brands. They're all really good and and uh, fairly inexpensive. They come in various sizes and brush shapes from a small tip to a, a flat brush. Now you see when I wet it, it turns a little bit different color. So it made him a little bit, him or her, a little bit warmer of a brown than it is in real life. But I'd say that's that warm brown is maybe the base color. So it is always good to start with the lightest colors and then you can add um, some of the, that darker fur on top. So I'm just trying to get some of that dark in there. And I just like to practice going kind of fast and loose as if I were in the field. I'm not trying to create, a, you know, a biological illustration for a museum or anything. I'm just uh, trying to go fast because that is usually the, um, the issue with myself and my students being a little bit too uh, particular. So I'm trying to really get that black tail since this is this species called the black-tailed jackrabbit or American desert hare. But you see how um, I did wet the paper first. And then uh, since I didn't have too much water on there, I could add some more dry pencil and then wet it again like I am here. I love these water soluble colored pencils because they're um, some of the some of the brands have thicker lead in them. It makes it faster, and some brands have thinner lead, like my uh, Faber Castell water brushes. Water soluble pencils have a thinner lead. I'm adding those whiskers because just like rodents, they have really long whiskers to help them communicate with each other and sense their environment. So Meg, the watercolor pencils, there's two brands. The Faber Castell called Gold Faber Aqua. And the Derwent brand Ink Tents. Derwents are made in England. And Faber Castells are made in Germany. There are a lot of brands. You can see I'm trying to keep it simple as if I'm in the field. So I'm just using a few different colors. And sometimes when I'm working in the field like this, once I'm done and I come back from the field, back to my studio or back to whatever lodging I have when I'm traveling, then I will go back into my sketchbook and maybe add some finer details uh, with a, a pen or fine tip pen or pencil or um, an opaque uh, white gel pen. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned a lot about the Lagomorph order, a little bit about pikas and bunnies and jackrabbits. And I hope you enjoyed uh, drawing our black-tailed jackrabbit with both uh, colored pencils and water-soluble colored pencils. So have a great day and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.